Are you pulling through a career setback, looking forward to launching the second phase of your career path? Do you know what you want? Are you happy with your current job? Do you feel you have too many or too little interests? Have you been unemployed for too long? We often find ourselves at career crossroads, whether you're just starting out and unsure which path to take, hoping to find a new passion or ready to move to the next level. Getting an outside perspective from a professional can be extremely helpful. Hello and welcome. I'm Garima and joining me on the dais today is Marita Harold, founder of Tree Yellow Corporate Training and Consulting. Thank you so much for joining me today, Marita. It's a real pleasure to be here and I've been looking forward to it. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, Marita. Marita, let's begin with your story. Help us understand who you are, where do you come from and how has your career path been? Uh, yeah, and, and listening to those questions, I'm not sure I've got answers to those questions even at this stage. Um, it, it is a learning journey and path. Uh, at the moment, and I'll start from present day and, and then uh, jump backwards in time. At the moment, I uh, own a training consultancy, a Dubai-based training consultancy that focuses on um, well-being to thrive in organizations um, so that we can sustain our energy and sustain our performance um, and, and the, what we do at work is the best that we can do, but that we also have something um, to uh, left for our own lives when we go home because a lot of professionals don't have that. They go home in the evening and they've given everything uh, to work. And this has come from my journey through corporate life. Um, so um, I didn't start here. Um, I actually started as a school teacher. Um, and I thought home economics and religion in inner city Dublin for a number of years. And even that wasn't necessarily a chosen path. It was what um, a girl in Ireland, uh, because I'm Irish, should do. It was the proper job and the proper subject for uh, a girl in, in Ireland. And in actual fact, it gave me um, my real interest in nutrition and biology and how our body works. So that's where the foundations for that came from. And at the very beginning of my career, I met a most wonderful group of school teachers, very committed uh, to what they were doing for their community. And it was really through that group of people um, that I think I was very lucky to be exposed to mindset uh, and what was possible. Um, but I also at some stage knew I didn't want to do this for 40 years, um, the same thing over uh, and over. And I took a career break um, at 28 and it was the first time, if you like, I left home at 28. And my, my father was horrified I took a career break because I didn't know what I was going to do. Um, and he didn't speak to me for a month. That was quite difficult. Um, and, and through that journey, I saw a job advertised in Dubai uh, as cabin crew um, in an airline nobody had heard of called Emirates. And I decided to uh, apply for it. And this was really unusual. I mean, you're going back 23 or 24 years ago, and this was not something that we did in, in our family. Um, but I, I came to Dubai um, and I flew for two years, most wonderful two years of, of my life, but also knew that wasn't what I wanted to, to do and wanted to stay. Um, and through that, I ended up sometimes by look and sometimes by design in various roles in the, the Emirates group where I developed a corporate skill set. Um, but as the airline grew, and the corporation grew, your ability to contribute across a broad range, which I liked, was narrowed because with efficiency, um, obviously jobs were um, redesigned um, so that that, that uh, could contribute better to the growth of the organization. Um, but for me, I just felt I, I was very narrow. Um, and um, when I left the organization, I left to do something completely different. And when it didn't work out, um, I thought, okay, what can I do? Which has led me to the path to working for myself through a freelance journey um, and to the founding of the company. So it hasn't been straightforward. And I really wish um, that I could say 
um, that I had designed it to get this far. Um, but uh, I had opportunities that I worked with. Um, I had people that supported me with it. Um, and it has been a process of getting me to here today. Um, and I can't look back. I, I, sometimes I do. My challenge has been to look back and say, oh my gosh, what was I doing? I wasted that time because here I am today and this is what I wanted to be doing. Um, and it's very easy to say that from where I am today. Um, but what I was doing was getting ready. And I have to remind myself that, that at this stage um, of, of my life, and I'm in another decade, that I have found what I want to be doing. Um, I'm not quite refined about it yet. There's still a lot of work to be doing that, but this is where I want to go forward. And everything that I have done has not been wasted. That is my challenge. It has contributed to getting me here today and the skill set that I have to, to bring it. So, um, you know, they're the highlights. <laughs> there's, there's a lot in there. It's been messy. <laughs> but it's been wonderful. That is something I can definitely gather from your story. It, but it's how you look at it. So there are some things that if you look at it, you could say that wasn't wonderful. But that was something that has contributed to um, today. Um, and I have been watching The Matrix again recently. And Morpheus has a line in The Matrix that says, it happened the way it happened. Yeah. And because of that, it couldn't happen any other way. So it's an acceptance of uh, the messy bits and the not so good bits were all growth and learning to 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 where i got to yeah so not all wonderful but but all learning right right yeah. and marita if we have to look at some of the challenges that you experienced when you were starting out how would you help us understand um, my biggest challenge, um, I think, if I'm to, to wrap it up neatly, would have been around my mindset and my belief in myself that I could do this. Um, because, you, you know, I grew up in a culture where uh, there was a stereotype about what I should be. Um, and the messaging that I received would be, well, why would you do that? And um, this is a safe job. This is a comfortable job. I, I came from a business background. Both my parents were, were in business. So it's unusual. My mother always said she didn't want me to work as hard as she did. Um, and she wanted something different for me. And for a long time, I chose that path. So my challenge would have been um, breaking out of what was the expectations of me um, and trying to find where my path was on that. And I, I still struggle um, with that. So it, it was understanding my strengths and my capabilities um, and knowing that I could do this. So if other people could see what I was good at and other people would say this to me, but I didn't believe it um, of myself. You know? uh, so that would have been my biggest challenge, would have been a belief in myself. Uh, I also did not explore um, my strengths and I didn't learn about myself in the way that we can today. Um, so I think um, uh, having uh, done that earlier in my career would have given me a lot more confidence in terms of I'm going to do this rather than staying where I was. Um, so it, I, I really understanding what your strengths are, where you need to ask for support uh, and, and help um, is so important. And there's so much available and free that you can do that. It's something that I would encourage anybody to do earlier on and not leave it as late as I did. Right, right. And Marita, understanding these dynamics, how would you introduce yourself 20 years back in time? Oh, God. <laughs> 20 years back in time. Um, now, there's a question. How would I have introduced myself? I almost apologetically um, for, for what I was doing and always in a support role rather than a starring role, if you want to put it on the stage. So I was happy to support people um, and I was happy to be running in the background uh, and, and very happy to be contributing to the general workings of it, but not wanting spotlight. So I think if I had to put words on it, I, I was in a supporting road, uh, role, in a, an, an apologetic role, if you like, for putting myself forward. Um, uh, and um, a, a little bit scared and unsure, um, or a lot scared and unsure. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I have had to work on those things because they're still there. 
you know, and they still want to come out. Right, <laughs> but right. but, but uh, they're, very, they're very deeply ingrained. But I have techniques and tools that I work with. Um, and I also now have experience. Um, so I can look back and say, you did that. And um, you know what? Uh, you're still breathing. Everybody you love is still alive. The world didn't end. So <laughs> you know what? Move on. Uh, yeah. But that took, that took a little bit of work. Right, right, right. Yeah. Absolutely. And understanding your career path, the career breaks that you took, the career transition that you experienced, how has your experience been moving from one career path to another? Because it is not easy for most of the people out there. We are conditioned to work in a particular role, in a particular environment for some time. And then there is a shift. How do we deal with that? Uh, well, my conditioning has, has, has um, that world of work has changed. So um, it was a, a lifetime permanent and pensionable teaching job. Um, and I got that, you know, I got it straight out of college. So I didn't do the traveling that people, um, people would do. And when I took my career break, when you're teaching in Ireland, um, you're allowed five or you were at that time I don't know what it is now um, you were allowed to take five years of a career break over your teaching career um, split into two years three years or take the whole five together and I, I applied for it so it was a safety net I came to fly for two years um, and then I or for a year and then I was going home and I'd still say I came out here for one year and or three years was my contract and I have stayed 23 years so that I, I still I still say three years is what it was um, but I had a safety net um, and four years into my career break the school came back to me and denied my um, career break and said we need you back because of and I didn't want to go back but there was also a, a real trepidation about giving up the the safety net particularly when I didn't have uh, I had been ill and I wasn't able to fly anymore so I was now in a part-time contract which was three months three months which was fine when you had a safety net um, but then I had to to say what do I do do I go back or do I stay um, and I thought it's very unfair of me. Oh, well, in actual fact, I decided to go home and I came in to tell them I was going home. And in the meeting, I opened my mouth and heard myself say, <laughs> I'm staying and that came out without, I had the Packers booked and everything. Um, but it was unfair of me to keep a job from the school because the school couldn't fill it. And that transition, that decision to commit myself to what I wanted was, act, was really powerful because it was then the three month contract changed into 18 months and then I got a permanent position because I'd built something around that. So in, in terms of that, when I was holding both, I wasn't committed to, to any. Uh, and my commitment to saying this is where I am rather than half here, half there was uh, something that really um, helped move me move me forward um, and when I moved it was a role in the safety department with Emirates so I worked in uh, and uh, I know the energy business is, is different um, but essentially from the safety point of view aviation and energy are the same I learned a lot from the oil and gas business through the safety it, and to distill into aviation safety um, and from there when I looked at where I could progress there was no place on the organizational chart for me <laughs> so I looked at what else was available in Emirates um, and I moved into cabin crew management um, and that was a fantastic move because it, it taught you about managing people and you touched yeah. every process of um, uh, every process in the company with the volume so if you're a manager in a regular role um, you maybe deal with it once in your career, uh, but I had 700 direct reports um, and you touched every single process every week. So that gave me a great grounding in refining my people um, management skills. And I would say to everybody, um, that's something that regardless of what your industry is or your role, um, people management skills, if you can, um, is something that's a game changer. Um, and then it was a really it was a progression of where can I go here after spending uh, 700 people for three years draws on your energy um, and it's not something you can sustain forever. So where can I go from this? 
um, and I looked within the organization. I did leave for personal reasons. I was going to retire at 45 and it spectacularly didn't work out. Um, so my next transition was I could not get a job, but there was a market for um, uh, 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 work i could get work um so i decided to freelance with um with jobs that i was able to do um and through that i understood really my value of what i could bring um because people were charging me charging for me but giving me something different um and i wasn't involved in the process and i didn't have control about what was being delivered in some cases and i looked at it and i thought you know i can actually do this for myself so that was the last transition um, but if you're looking at it now in terms of conditioning there isn't a job for life anymore and i think that's really important so i started out my journey thinking uh, job for life and i think there's a lot of people particularly at the moment who have been conditioned like that that are suffering dreadfully because um we we haven't in organizations a lot of organizations not all built a skill set so that we can ha um, help people if you like leave <laughs> we want to keep them but you know in terms of a philosophy of leadership and developing people we should be developing people so um that they can grow and and um leave us but not want to leave us if you like um, but i think a lot of people at the moment who have been in jobs a very long time and those jobs have gone um don't have the skill set and that's very upsetting when it's something that we can provide right right yeah. and there's a very interesting point that you mentioned here when we're talking about employers and uh, the people who have a certain skill set but they might be happier in a different role in a different mm -hmm. career path in a different organization mm -hmm. but the employers are not ready to let them go in this situation what would your message be for these employers uh, for the employers yes Oh, okay. Um, well, I don't think you can keep as an organization. I don't think you can make somebody stay. Um, the organization set themselves up or have done um, uh, to entice you to stay. <laughs> so uh, People do. Um, but from a, a, a company point of view, of course, you want to keep the, the best of the, of the people. Um, but there's, in terms of doing that, people stay for, it's not about money, people stay where they've got opportunities to grow and develop. Um, and if you grow somebody so that they have the ability to move somebody else, but treat them well enough, that people will stay. So what I would say is don't be afraid of investing in people. Um, when you can grow and you have opportunity, um, invest in those people so that they have the choice, uh, but their right. choice is that they will stay. Right. And we can see the organizations that do this well, um, you see that. You've got very dynamic people that have been there a very long time and have no desire to leave because they've been invested in. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's this feeling uh, when we were talking about your career uh, transition, there's this feeling of I might get a job, I might not get a job, and I did not get a job. Mm. Now this environment is particularly very scary for some people out there. And considering the fact that oil and gas industry is one of the hardest hit sectors mm -hmm. in these times currently with the massive job cuts and layoffs, how would you help these people? What would your message be for them? Okay, so, you know, it's an individual basis, um, but certainly uh, the ability to learn and unlearn is really important at the moment. Um, so uh, in terms of, um, uh, it, it comes back to a belief in yourself. There are people getting jobs at the moment. Um, and there are people that are not and it is the uh, I think the belief system and how you feel about it attracts different things um, I, I think sitting down and understanding where your skill set is uh, not specific to an industry um, but a skill set that you can offer across the board understanding that skill set and when you go through uh, our brains don't like uncertainty so when you go through what you're good at and you find evidence of where you've applied that uh, you know you're creating some certainty for yourself right. so I know I can do this 
I know I can do this and this is where I've done it before. Um, and then it's about having belief that you have that skill set and that that skill set, where can you apply it? So instead of one way thinking, um, where would this skill set be useful in another industry? Um, because it is transferable. I was aviation. Um, and, um, you know, people say to me, where do those dots connect? They do connect. Um, it, it was looking to see what do I have um, that I can offer somebody else and where can I offer it? And that was a, a large part of setting up a, a training consultancy because there are many. So what made me, what made me different? Um, and I would say, look at three things that you can offer um, that combined make you unique. <laughs> so uh, uh, you might have, um, uh, there's, there are lots of people that can do well-being. There's lots of people that can do leadership. Um, and there are lots of people, we work through Lego, Lego Serious Play. Um, so what can I do? I, I actually can combine the three um, and speak a different language. I can speak the well-being language through leadership and offer a creative means of facilitation. So I'm bringing something different that people uh, will look at me. So look at what you've got, look at everything you have um, and say, um, what are my three strengths, if you like, that I can combine that gives me something unique to add to an, or to give to an offer to an organization. Um, and then you start thinking about what you're capable of um, and where it can be applied. But it, it is just because you've been here doesn't mean you can't go anywhere else. It's about understanding what they need what you've got that you can offer to it, and then a belief that that skill set, we can learn technical, okay. uh, we can learn, it, there are things, you, you know, you can learn most things as far as I'm concerned, um, but in terms of some things that are easier to teach, um, it's easier to teach um, how, how to do a, maybe a process than it is about your belief that you can transfer something. That takes maybe a little bit more work. Um, so do that work uh, and then you can learn things as long as you can bring a skill set about people, um, uh, your emotionally intelligence, and you've got something that's unique. Mm -hmm. And we can all create something unique by looking at three things and combining it. Yes, yes. Yeah. And now that brings me uh, to an understanding of the tree yellow uh, foundation. Help us understand what has been the core inspiration uh, behind this organization and what particular challenges you intend to solve with okay. your company. Um, so there, there is one defining moment um, and then there's been a lot of refining and processing. Um, and the defining moment would have been uh, my nephew many years ago when he was very little uh, and he was learning numbers and colors. Uh, he said, my favorite number is yellow. And uh, we, all the adults laughed and thought, no, no, numbers aren't, yet, aren't colors. <laughs> but when we looked, written down the number three was um, yellow. And it was the perspective. So our perspective was totally set that it couldn't be one thing. And he saw something different. So for me, it's about your ability to see things differently um, and different perspectives and growing and opening up perspectives. Uh, and then it gets very boring. I couldn't get a domain name. So I played with all the concepts uh, and I liked the idea of a tree for growth. Um, yeah. and, um, uh, and it connects with our three uh, supporting that, that at the time were our three supporting um, principles um, and and um, it, it, I loved the idea that the yellow was incorporated for the energy um, and with the growth uh, through that it's been a process of understanding um, I started this it was in my head so taking it out in a format that people could refine. My sister used to say to me, but I don't understand what you are selling. <laughs> I thought, how can you not understand what I am selling? And I did it a little bit backwards. Maybe I should have started there. So it has been a process of refining. But essentially, my passion is that uh, we all have capability to be so much better um, than what we are. Um, and a lot of the time, we don't have the tools to do it. We maybe can see it far away that, that this is something that's possible. Um, we don't have the tools. So if you like, the problem that we solve is the how to in terms of um, and across various uh, disciplines of business to be better. 
so that you can live a better life, that you, you're excited about going to work and that you've energy left to come home. And it may be through um, new, traditional tools like uh, nutrition um, and exercise, but we, you know, we look at uh, mindset, how you combine them together, rest and recovery, um, and that's across the physiological. Um, a lot around belief and coaching, um, with individuals um, and with groups. Uh, and I love working with teams. So um, how you get deeper information out of teams so that teams can work better. So that comes through the Lego play where um, you, you, you're you approaching the problem uh, that uh, the organization is trying to solve and getting every single person's input so you can get the best possible solution. Wow. But it's taken a long while to get there. <laughs> I can totally understand. And that's a beautiful story uh, there with the organization, especially with the name uh, that you have uh, rightly chosen. And uh, help our viewers understand how can they connect with you? How can they approach your organization if they're seeking out uh, any help in this regard? Okay. Where can they find you? Um, so uh, on the website, we'll have a new website um, the end of next week, the week after we're in the process of doing a final draft. That's treeyellow.com. Um, and LinkedIn is our primary channel for what happens. LinkedIn's a fabulous tool um, in terms of meeting people, connecting with people. Um, I, I, in actual fact, more people um, connect with me directly and then to the company. I'm the only Marita Harland on LinkedIn, so it's, that's not too difficult. Uh, and I didn't know that until somebody uh, told me. Um, and uh, Instagram, we're starting to, to play with. So for a long time, this was me. Mm -hmm. um, and I did a lot of this. Um, and uh, so there's been some things that we have lost out on through what has happened. Obviously, business is slow, um, but it has given um, me an opportunity to think about what's really important um, and, and refine it. And we're doing a lot of work on the, the uh, marketing side of it now. Right. But uh, LinkedIn, Tree Yellow, um, Marita Harald on LinkedIn and treeyellow.com. Um, and, you know, uh, I try to uh, reply to, and I generally do get there eventually, um, to everybody, because I know what it is like to try and start this when people ignored me, <laughs> yeah. you, you know, uh, and I would say to you, don't ever be afraid to reach out to, to anybody that you feel you can learn from. The worst they can do is say no. And the very best they can do is say yes. So if there's people that appear, if you want to call them famous, but I have reached out to people I have um, seen write articles on uh, Forbes or Harvard Business Review, the other side of the world, and just say, I love that. And could I speak with you? And it's amazing what that opens doors. So don't be afraid of reaching out to people because most people started where you where, where I did, where, where maybe you're starting from, uh, and someone helped them. Um, and generally, they're very open to giving back. Absolutely. Even I can relate with this story because uh, for interviews, when I started reaching out to people, it has not been easy for me. Like countless uh, rejections have been there, but I just knew that this is what I want to do. Let me just talk to you at least. Listen to me first, what I have to say. So yes, you are right. Uh, and, here, okay. and here you are today. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Now, Marita, how are you looking at COVID-19 and its impact on the global community? Because this is definitely something we have not experienced before, a completely new terrain, and we do not know what is there in store for us. How are you looking at this pandemic? Um, well, personally, I needed to stop. So for at the very beginning, when we didn't know what, it, what, what it, the impact was going to be, and I thought it was going to be two or three weeks, um, I was actually very happy to stop <laughs> and, and to, to um, regroup and think things through. Um, there's no doubt it's changing the world. Um, and as you say, we don't know how, and I don't know how. Um, how I look at it for me personally, is what what can I bring um, to what what can I bring um, to, to uh, that people need at the moment? And some of that may be paid. A lot of it is voluntary, uh, voluntarily. But I I think we're rethinking the way we did 
we did business and we do business. Um, there's uh, a lot of people unemployed um, that are looking for, for jobs and that's going to last for a long while. Um, and really for me, uh, in my little bubble of the world, um, where I see the biggest impact is people don't have the skills to deal with it. So, so for me, uh, I know there's things happening economically and there's things, um, but what I'm seeing is initially people didn't um, have the tools to deal with the mental and emotional uncertainty that came with this. And that has brought with itself just so many um, uh, issues. There are opportunities, there's people um, growing out of this, there's people finding new um, things out of this, there are opportunities are there, but the skill set to resource that is where I see that, that, that people don't have. So for me, this has been the biggest impact um, in, in my bubble, um, is the amount of people that need support and that maybe don't know how to provide it or to resource themselves. Right, right. You know, yeah. Yes, and it's particularly overwhelming for the student community, especially mm. for the class of 2020 graduating this year. There is a lot to take in for them. What skills do you think they would need that would help them stand out and make an impact? And what should they really focus on during these times? Um, so it definitely, I think I've said it already, it's definitely the ability to learn and unlearn um, and to, to adapt. So uh, being able to say, okay, today this is true for me, um, but tomorrow I need to forget it. So to question, um, to keep asking questions until you find the right question, because if you're asking the wrong question, you know, you're going to be thinking about the wrong answer. Um, but it, it is really about if, if you're not getting the answer, how can you ask the question in a different way so it can shift your perspective? Um, and I, um, it, you know, I, I remember starting out and thinking, what is it going to look like? You don't need all the answers now. You just need the next step. Um, and the next step leads to the, the, the next step. Uh, and so understand as much about yourself and your strengths as you can. Um, and, uh, you, you know, there's so many online tools that are available that can support you in doing that. You don't need to spend, you don't need to spend money um, with that. Um, understand what you've got that's uniquely for you. Um, and don't attach yourself too much to what you think it should look like. Um, if you get an opportunity, look at what's in it for you and take that step and then um, think about where you go from, from, from there. Um, so the destination for me was always important, not necessarily the path. This is where I want to go. The path has branched different ways. Um, so, it, you know, uh, it, there, there will be opportunity. It's not going to stay the way it is. It never, ever does. Um, and um, it, it, we will find something that helps us go back to whatever life is going to look like. Um, that may take a little bit of time. How do you use this time at the moment? Right, right. Yeah. That's a very powerful uh, message here. I would like to understand how do you look back at your journey? Because your story is very, very interesting. And what I can gather is you have taken every challenge in your career path head on and you have emerged stronger and better with each particular challenge, I would say. How I, sometimes I wish I hadn't taken them all head on. <laughs> so that would have been that there were softer ways of maybe, maybe doing that. But uh, my mother used to say to us, the, the quickest way around it is through it. Um, so that's something that I that I use when you look at it, there's no point in avoiding it, it's there. Um, so what do, you, what do you do to get to the other side of it? Some of the challenges have been, so when I look back, the challenges have arisen because I wasn't listening to where I should have been. Um, so they've all taught me something. Um, and um, uh, so if I look back, I wasn't listening a lot of the time to what was happening around me. I was listening to the story that was in my head about what it should be. Or maybe I wasn't just listening at all. I was just going um, with it. I would like to um, say have a plan. Um, I, I think that's good and have some shape of what you you would like but the plan uh, as a guideline 
of, of where you go um, and, and listen to the opportunities and listen, listen to where you, you are good at. Uh, I heard on a podcast at the weekend, one of the things is what do other people say about you or what did they say about you as a child? Um, and, you know, that was really interesting for me because the things that were said about me as a child is what I'm now for, uh, realizing were my strengths. Um, and I've spent a lot of time ignoring that. <laughs> so uh, um, I, would, I would say, uh, looking back, I didn't listen. So it's taken me longer to get to here than, than maybe it should have done. But again, I accept it couldn't have happened any other way. So you can make it easier for yourself or you can make it a little bit more difficult um, for yourself. Um, but look at what you, you truly want. It, you, you know, it doesn't have to be the paid job. Um, they can exist separately um, and you can find, you know, your paid job doesn't have to be your passion, uh, but it's, you can still have meaning and contribute to the organization and pursue, pursue the passion in an unpaid capacity. It doesn't have to look one thing like the, the other. Um, so don't get too set in the, stereo, the stereotypes around it. And when there's opportunity, really stop and think, um, what's this telling me? Um, and, and how can I use this to go to where I want to go? And that's what I, when I look back, that's what I see. Uh, and if I'm on a bad day, I see it as wasted potential. Um, and if I see it as a good day, um, I, uh, you know, it is the way it happened. I don't spend a lot of time looking back. I take the lessons and I look forward. Um, so what were the lessons? I can't change that. How can I apply them going forward? So don't spend, look back to learn take it and move it forward um, but don't spend too much time looking back or in in the past it doesn't it doesn't help you um, move forward absolutely and you being a founder yourself what is your message for the founders and entrepreneurs out there um it's it's worth it <laughs> uh, but that brings with it it's not always easy so uh, you know I have uh, uh, if I have to say one of my strategies in the very early days was crying I cried a lot because it got everything out um, frustration anger disappointment um, and um, uh, it, you have to commit a lot to it um, so you do have to give things up now to have the things you want later um, patience implies um, that it will happen so be patient uh, patience is wonderful if if you're patient you already believe it will happen um, so um, be patient with it and if it's not working look at why it's not working um, is it something don't be too emotional about it if it's not working um, because you want to keep it why question that um, you don't always have to go with the rational decision, but mm -hmm. always question it and understand why you're making the, the, the decision. Um, and the, when it works, it's, it's, it's so wonderful, you know? So hang, hang with it um, if it's something that, that is tough. There's a great satisfaction of um, refining it and watching it work when, when it does. Right. Yeah. Thank you so much for uh, sharing your story, your unique You're journey welcome. with me today. Thank you for joining me, taking out the time for this discussion. It has been absolutely wonderful having you on the dais today. Thank An you. absolute pleasure to be here. And please reach out if you want to reach out. Not, not you, but to, to your audience. Yes. I'm very yes. happy to help if I can. Absolutely.